Hi guys, it's Aga from Arvis Artist and today we'll continue modeling the plant. This is the second part of the tutorial, so make sure you watch the first part before. I put the link in the corner. We'll be using the GrowFX plugin. If you want to check it out, the link will be in the description. So let's start from opening the file from the previous lesson. Open the note editor. This is where we finished in the last part. We have a distributor at the beginning and another path distributor which creates the leaves. We don't have to use only a value. We can also use some additional nodes to affect the model, like random generator, for example. But we can do even more interesting things. Let me make the first path longer so we can see it better. I have to lower the density. We can affect the values by path position. Let's drag a node from a path position and use the effect node. Plug it to the path's length slot. Then add a graph to the factor slot. Now you can see how the graph affects the length of the paths. Let me create a fresh graph. I will make the paths shorter further down on the first path. Let's go back to the original length of the first path. The base of the plant is ready. Now we'll add some modifiers to make it look like a real plant. We can add a modifier by dragging a blue line from the left side of the path node. Here is the list of available modifiers. Let's start by adding the vector direction modifier. We can control the effect by changing the strength. We can also affect it by the position along the first path. Let's plug it to the strength slot and use the graph like before.
I will increase the strength to make the effect stronger. Here is how the graph affects the outcome. I plug it back and adjust it a bit. You can change the position type to Bezier or add an additional point. To add another modifier, we have to drag a line from the bottom of the last modifier. This time, let's add a random direction modifier. It doesn't look too good, but we'll fix it. Changing the angle doesn't help much. Increase the smoothing value first. Now you can clearly see how it works. The larger the smoothing, the less visible the effect. Play around with these values until you are satisfied with the result. Let's add an effect node here too, to control the angle. Adjust the graph like that. Next, let's add the noise direction modifier. I increase the strength to show you how it works. You can smooth it by increasing the scale. This time, let's add a graph on the right-hand side of the value. This way, we can control the effect along the second level paths. The effect will be stronger on the end of the paths. Next, I add a hard band modifier. It adds a strong band along the path. Here we can control where the band starts.
turn off band by angle option and adjust the strength. will affect it by path position too. Let's do it like before. Play around with the graph. Next, I add a twist modifier. Here is how it works. I set the value to 1 and add a graph. I twist it on the ends more. We can add some modifiers more than once. I add a random direction modifier again. Adjust the values. I'll make the mesh thinner. In the next step, we'll add a ground geometry. Let's add an object reaction modifier and add the box we just created. Increase the distance to smooth it out. I'll make it even more thin.
Let's turn off Optimize Faces option and adjust the sides. I will increase the steps too. I will make it more dense now. It's better to start with lower density and increase it after the model is set up. I will make some final adjustments. That's it for this part. Make sure you save your file so you can continue working on this when the third part is live. I hope you learned something useful today. Let me know in the comments if you want me to continue making videos about GRAFX. That's it. Thanks for watching and also don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video.